the headlines. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken visits the West Bank and Iraq for talks with leaders in the region. He says discussions are ongoing about a humanitarian pause in fighting. There's no doubt from my conversations with uh, all of our colleagues who were in Amman yesterday that everyone would welcome the humanitarian pause because, again, it could advance things that we're all trying to accomplish, including getting uh, hostages back, including getting a lot more assistance into Gaza, including getting people out of Gaza. Israel says its forces have cut Gaza in two after its ground offensive against Hamas reached the coast of the Palestinian territory. They reached the beach at the southern part of the city of Gaza and they've encircled Gaza and today we have Gaza North and Gaza South. Meanwhile, the Israeli bombardment of Gaza continues. Our correspondent in Gaza says tonight's airstrikes have been the most intense since the beginning of the war. And Prince William has arrived in Singapore to announce the winners of his Earthshot Environmental Prize. A radio host in the Philippines has been killed during a live broadcast. Juan Hulaman, known as DJ Johnny Walker, was live streaming his program on Facebook when a gunman entered his studio and shot him at close range. Police said they were not aware of any previous threats against his life. And a hostage situation at Hamburg Airport in Germany involving a young child ended after 18 hours. 35-year-old man drove through a security barrier and onto the airport tarmac on Saturday night with his four-year-old daughter in the car and parked under a plate. The man eventually turned himself into authorities without resistance and was arrested with the child appearing to be unharmed, according to police. Uganda's president is rowing with the U.S. over Washington's decision to remove his country from a major trade pact over human rights violations. Uganda has faced international criticism for a harsh anti-gay law adopted in May, and President Yoweri Museveni says that his country doesn't need help from the U.S. to achieve its goals. Nearly 32,000 migrants have reached Spain's Canary Island on small boats this year, according to regional authorities, and this year's crossings surpassed the previous record in 2006. The Spanish Coast Guard said that they had rescued 739 people off the coast of El Hierro. Now to Nepal, where thousands of people are being forced to spend nights outdoors after their houses were damaged by a strong earthquake in the country on Friday. 157 people have died and at least more than 300 people were injured in the quake. Srijana Shreshta reports from Western Nepal. I'm in the Churi village of Nalgad municipality in Jajarkot district. You can see a tragic scene behind. 13 people are being cremated together. Those 13 people were killed in the 6.4 magnitude earthquake that occurred on Friday night. Locals told us that all 186 houses have been damaged in the village and the people affected by the earthquake have been eagerly waiting for the relief operation in the area. Our clothes, beds and food grains, everything are inside the rubble. We have not been able to recover them. It's cold outside and the government should look after us urgently. There is a risk that even those who are alive might die from the cold. Our houses are destroyed. We are now sleeping in agricultural fields. Our children are sick. We don't have clothes and blankets. It's cold outside. We don't have tents. The dew drops are falling over us. It has been two nights. We've made our children sleep in the barren fields. Locals told us that this is the first time they have ever witnessed such a tragic incident in this area.